Hello, my name is Chris Bond and I'm Senior Design Engineer with All Speeds Limited. Today I'd like to talk you through our existing product range, focusing on projects that we've completed within the offshore wind industry. I'll then be moving on to focus on recent developments and improvements we've made to cable retrieval operations using our new cable retrieval tool, the CRT200. So, to briefly discuss our history, Webtool is the brand name of our subsea hydraulic cutters and systems. We've been in the industry now for 40 years, working with some high profile clients with our cutters used worldwide. I don't think it's unfair to say that our cutters have become firm favourites with ROV pilots, who cite the ease of tool deployment as a particular reason for their preferred use. We have cutters from our standard range for cutting steel wire rope, umbilicals, soft lines, risers and subsea power cables up to a maximum diameter of 270mm at virtually any water depth. Here we have some ROV footage which demonstrates how easy our standard tools are to deploy. The ROV positions the tool over the wire rope actuates the hydraulic handle and the sample is now captive and ready to be cut. Another quick video here, this one is from our test site showing one of our larger tools, the RCV115, cutting a 6 inch quad core subsea power cable. You see the final cut time of only 6.3 seconds if you couple that with the ease of deployment we've just seen, hopefully you appreciate how time effective our cutters can be. Here we see a few other examples of cut items which I feel may be relevant to our audience. A 185mm diameter electrical cable, a 216mm dual core cable, 80mm diameter aluminium and copper electrical cables, along with a small communications cable. As we're all aware, the offshore wind industry is a growing market within the UK. We have almost 2,000 turbines in operation at present, with many more farms being given the green light. With this growth comes more subsea cable and more chance of incident. Accidents do occur which can damage subsea power cable in spite of new armour and protection technologies. Trawler fishing vessels and anchors are two leading contributors to cable damage. Subsea landslides and abrasion can also cause outages. This slide shows how much cable is present around a typical farm and I hope you can appreciate how any downtime can quickly erode a field's profitability. So what is the repair procedure? Please appreciate that this is a heavily simplified workflow, but first the fault needs to be found, which can be done through a variety of methods. Many modern cables have inbuilt fault detection, which allows precise feedback in the event of damage. Once located, the cable needs to be cut at that point. We've already discussed how web tool cutters can perform this action quickly and efficiently. The cable is then retrieved to surface. We'll talk more about this momentarily. A new section of cable can then be spliced into place. This can then be tested and returned to the seabed. Currently, there are numerous tools on the market that are used for cable retrieval. The most popular of which is a double choke sling. This would involve an ROV wrapping the cable with a sling and essentially threading it back through itself to create a choke that will enable retrieval back to the vessel. The trenching of the cable and the low dexterity of an ROV makes this a very slow and time consuming process, adding expensive vessel time to any repair operation. The final result is also considered by many to be unsafe. The lift requires a constant applied load to maintain the grip and so any wave or shifting buoyancy can lead to the cable slipping and potentially landing on expensive subsea equipment. Over the years we've been contacted by many companies performing this type of work who have seen how simple our cuts are to deploy and asked if we may have a solution to cable retrieval. Well, I'm now delighted to say that we do.
The CRT200 cable retrieval tool is new to market and will enable safe cable retrieval with a heavy reduction in trenching and ROV time. The tool was designed in accordance with global accreditation body DMVGL, who have checked our calculations and tool design and verified that the tool conforms with the recognised offshore standards, the marine operations and marine warranty and the standard for offshore and platform lifting appliances. We've listened closely to the inquiries and tried to maintain one key desirable, that the tool is simple to deploy. This animation shows how the tool is lowered onto the cable and clamped on from above, requiring minimal trenching. The tool is opened and closed by a lead screw, which mechanically locks once clamped onto the cable, meaning that it cannot let go without hydraulic actuation, improving safety over alternative methods. The main lift is performed via the two large lifting shackles located on the front of the tool. This allows easy retrieval of the tool to the deck of a vessel ready for repair. The testing of the tool has also been witnessed and approved by DMVGL. The tool is rated for retrieving a maximum of 20 tonnes of cable up to a diameter of 200 millimetres. Here we have a few images of the tool taken from its first deployments. The first image is a deck test of the tool, gripping a customer's 5 inch power cable and being successfully load tested to 20 tonnes via the clump weight as shown. The second image is taken from the tool's first subsea deployment, seen here being lowered over the side of the vessel. The third image, although grainy, is actually my favourite. It is taken from ROV footage and shows the tool successfully deployed onto a cable with no prior cleaning or trenching required demonstrating the huge savings on vessel time. One particular success story for the tool is that it has now been selected as the primary retrieval system for Nippon Salvage in Japan. After an initial trial and rental period, Nippon purchased a fleet of tools for immediate deployment on a huge project replacing a number of Japan's aging subsea power cables. You see from the images that they opted for a torque tool version of the gripper. They also wanted them supplied with an additional coating system for extended period subsea, opting to deploy them with a smaller, cheaper vessel initially and return some days later to retrieve the cable. The development of our tooling is by no means finished nor are we standing still within the offshore wind market. The gripper is being targeted for additional work. We currently have a tool deployed in America and another on trial in the English Channel. We have development projects ongoing to better meet our customers' demands, including smaller grippers and a cut and grip tool that will combine our cutting technology with the gripper we've just discussed, further simplifying the repair process. That brings us to the end of my presentation. I hope you all found it informative and I would like to thank you all very much for listening. Ordinarily, I would have a question and answer session here, but unfortunately that's not possible. So please, if you have any questions, do get in touch. My email address is chris.bond at allspeeds.co.uk or feel free to call through to our offices. Thank you again and stay safe.